Oh, we can we can definitely hear it. Ah, there. Um, I'm not lying when I'm just saying this. I've just taken the boxing off there that was on that last video. And I've cut this off here, pulled the boxing out, and it's got a bit of sticky tape on there. Plumbers videos. My name's Alan Hart, and today I've got a really good video today. We've got Elliot from E-Fry Gas Services, and Elliot's gonna go through day in the life of a plumber. He's, gonna, he's got lots of different videos and clips from different jobs that he's been to, and he's gonna share them with us in this video today. Also, I've got a disaster that I went to, and all I'll say is um, never meet your hero. Um, so, and it's one of my jobs, so I'll talk to you about that as well later on in the video. If you can, as always, put a comment below in the video. It really helps with uh, with YouTube and Google algorithms. And also, as always, if you could put a thumbs up, I really appreciate that. And if you've got any suggestions for any other type of videos, again, please put them in comments below. And I will add my WhatsApp number in uh, below in this video as well. So if you're a gas engineer or a plumber and you want to send me some videos in, then please do send them in. If you can send them in in landscape, it, it helps with the videos. But if you've got some some old ones that's in the other way, um, then send them ones in as well. As long as you're happy for me to use them um, on my social media. Um, yeah, without further ado, let's get into this video. Day in the life. I thought I'd do a quick day in the life, if I can remember to do on every job. Hello to the Iron Heart Fan Club. Um, first day back after COVID, I'm already out of breath. So, I forgot to turn my torch on. Let's see if I can do this whilst I'm... No, I can't. Trying. But in this tiny little cupboard here are all the bits and bobs for the board. And I've had a leak from this TF1 in the past, but I had a phone call yesterday before I was COVID free out of COVID prison saying that um, she had a leak under here somewhere. So I'm going to hazard a guess. It's on this terrible bit of filling loop. Let's go and turn the water on. Oh, we can, def we can definitely hear it. Ah, there, on a washing machine hose. Let's get you shut that off. Get out. That is definitely at arm's reach. Don't know if you could see me trying to reach that back then, but um, I, I can't get to that. <laughs> Just about reach that with my hands. And this one is a dishwasher. It's all integrated. Brilliant. So what we're going to have to try and do is see if I can get that tightened up in my hand. We shall see. Um, not great. Let's take my jacket off and we'll see what we can do. And I can't stop the press now. Can't get rid of it. So on that one, it's actually leaking from this joint there. So where this metal bit crimps in and changes to the inner bit, which is the flange. Let's see if I can just take that off a second. Press the phone there. So. Pick the phone up again and throw it on the top. So if you can see that sort of translucent bit there, where that becomes onto this for the flange. So that's where it's leaking from. Let's go and have a look in the van. See if we've got something. Who knew? I had one. I don't normally carry plenty of these because believe it or not, I don't often see many that leak. I'm sure plenty of you do out there, but there we go. And my new tool bag. Look at it. It's ready to do a day's work, although I haven't needed it yet, but it's ready to do a day's work. Can't wait to actually use it. So this is the Rogue um, 9, Velocity 9. Um, but yeah, I quite like it. We shall see. I've got a carpet at the back of my van. There's a good one. Um, for the damp and in the vans, I carpeted my last one, carpeted the ceiling, carpeted all the walls that you can get to, and carpeted the floor. Um, anybody else carpet them? I found it was the only thing that did actually stop the damp in its tracks. Yeah, um, leave your comments. Do you carpet your vans, or do you only do that for your camper vans? So just remember, when you're working in stupidly tight areas, make your life a little bit easier, and do all the bits that are a bit more complicated. So for this one, trying to get this unscrewed at arm's length, I'll show you a minute ago, it's there. It's not, I didn't get the phone for a while. It's not easy. Um, that is not a big gap. In comparison, a water bottle width is there, look. So it's 
really not that wide. Um, so, yeah, do all the complicated bits first that you can't, you know that you can't do, and then it should be easier. I mean, to be honest, I'm really, really glad that is a push for elbow, because if that was end feed, um, then I, I would not be able to get there with my arms, so I'd have had to take the dishwasher out to get access there. I don't know if the dishwasher is in a separate unit, is it? Let's have a look. can't see without reviewing the footage because I can't see that but maybe the uh, dishwasher out maybe the dishwasher out and then cut cut a, a um, the panel but do all the complicated bits first and then when it comes to pushing it all together you'll be fine um here's a question when you tighten up these washing machine hoses do people use grips or do people go hand tight there's a good question um I normally use a pair of grips but I know that when you read, or the vast majority that I've read, I don't think, in fact, I've never read one that says use grips. It always says hand tight um, on the back of the washing machine or dishwasher and hand tight on here. Um, all the ones I've read. But yeah, that'd be interesting. I'm going to use two hands in a second. Okay, so it's in. It's done. That, that one there, look. Let's go and pop the water on and make sure that the hose I've used has not got... Um, problem with it. I'll be honest it's been in the van for longer than a year. Not that makes any bad things, I'm sure I've got lots of other things in the van that's been in the van for longer than a year but let's see what we got. There you are. No leaks. Leak free. That's good to me. But yeah, a little bit of water from where it splashed when it was turned on over everything. But there we go, and that's the lovely filling loop. It's got a double check valve on it, a nice isolation valve. But yeah, not really in the right order either. But um, boiler pressure's a bit low. At some point, I need to give this a good service. I was meant to service this before Christmas, um, but I just didn't get time. I just haven't got time to get here. Worcesters, most of the older Worcesters don't have pressure sensors on them. Um, the more modern ones, I don't know the range, but I've seen that they do. It actually looks like the same pressure sensor that the valence and the glowworms use. So let's be honest, they will block up. Um, I see, see that Baxi ones are probably the most reliable for not blocking up, actually. What I found, in my opinion, but I don't know what you others there think. Uh, I'll just put the pressure up for her. Take that up. Going. Yeah, slowly. Oh yeah, who else taps the gauge? I just feel that like I have to. <laughs> Irrespective if the um, if the supply line so it is blocked or not, I always feel I have to give them a, a tap. Like I'm an old school submariner. But there we go. That's what I feel I have to do. And there's a good one for you people that are learning. Pressure dropping. What could be the causes? Right. And yes, that should be disconnected, but I'm not going to upset that old hose. So it's been like that for however long. It's staying like that. Until such time, I actually work on the border, then I'm going to change it over. But yeah, there we go. Job one. Done. Job one. Done. Thank you very much for that, Elliot. Um, please put a comment below. Do you tighten the hoses with the grips? Or do you do them on tight? Personally... I'd always nip them up with grips, if I'm honest. Um, but I always refer to installation instructions, as always. I'm always going to say that, just to cover us. Um, filling loop. Put a comment below. Let me know what you think's wrong with that filling loop. Because there's something that's really wrong with that filling loop. Um, and I'm going to do a separate video on filling loops. Um, because there's something so wrong with that. Um, but yeah, let's go back to Elliot. And go back to day two. Hello to the Iron Heart Fan Club. It's Tuesday. New boiler going in. Looks fairly straightforward. The only thing is this is on the fourth floor. <laughs> a rather large property. And it's taken me forever to lug all the tools and dust sheets up. Um, I got on site for exactly one minute past seven. It has now just gone half past eight. And the other beauty is they're digging up all the gas mains outside. Oop, if you can see. Try not to drop my phone now. Here we go. 
So I couldn't park anywhere near, which was lovely, but the challenge is. Um, this one's coming out. And uh, this is actually a second border in a house, so I had to do some few little calculations. Just bear this in mind when you've got total usage. So it's only got another boiler, but I had to check the usage of gas from that boiler to make sure that a new boiler will go in and be beneath the six cubic metres of gas we have and below the total kilowatts, which we are. Um, so a little 25 kilowatt combi going in here, and downstairs is a small heat only, um, doing unvented in the rest of the house, but this is like its own. This floor here is its own um, entity, if you like. And one thing just to take notice of, where the flue comes out here, this is an old Baxi boiler. And the flue, if you can see that, there, sticks out. You're not allowed that on Baxi, but you are allowed it on glowworms. So we're having a small glowworm go in here. Let's try and do it from this side. Oh, it's got safety catches on everything. Um, if that's a bit clearer, I'm not sure. But yeah, the glow worms allowed to have white externally, so we're going to be sticking it out to make to uh, get the clearances. But yeah, that is today's job. But it's, it's taken me an hour and a half to get this far, and not all the tools are up yet, so this will be fun. Um, I'm not lying when I'm just saying this. I've just taken the boxing off there that was on that last video, and I've cut this off here, pulled the boxing out. And it's got a bit of sticky tape on there. Now, at some point, you can see that the solvent well's taken, but there's the hole. There's There was nothing sticking outside before, I know that. And there is nothing fallen. There's a bit of cable in there. But where the hell has that condense been running? Just, there's nothing in there. The condense must have just been dripping in the building. <laughs> okay, that's that's the best I've ever found. But what? Great, wonderful. I assume they had a hidden condensed somewhere in here and go into some waste thing. Now there is nowhere this side of the house would drain in it. Flapping, brilliant. So either pump it to nowhere or. They've got steel gutters, so I can't terminate it into a gutter. I've no idea what I'm going to do now. Let's just put an even bigger throw on the day. What? That is nuts. There we go. Joy. <laughs> so the update is I cut a hole in the boxing. And there's a soil pipe. Woo! The gods are looking on me today. I mean, they're not, because this is a pain in the ass. But, um, yeah. The gods are here, so... Um, Cut a hole in there, put the access panel in. And I can... Uh, I can crack on. Never thought that'd work. <laughs> Never thought I'd get that lucky. Winning. So, there's the hole cut in. And I've put a washing machine trap, because the glow worms and the valence, they need an air break. Um, Always read the instructions first, don't take my word for it. And then that will sit in there. Sorry, not holding the camera very well. And it'll be nice and finished like that. And then uh, that end will come out once it's all set in. So that'll be an access panel. So I don't think this is very good, but that will be an access panel for getting to that. But yeah, there we go. Um, and for me, when I need an air break, I'd use a washing machine, washing machine upstand kit if I can, and this is hidden in this large boxing. So, yeah, there we go. Luckily, I got, got out of trouble on this one, but it doesn't always happen that way. So, remember, terms and conditions. Thank you for that, Elia. Um, the inspection hatch is a really good, really good touch. Um, but as Elliot said as well, I always refer to installation instructions these videos are not training videos we're not telling you how to do something what we're doing is we're showing you jobs and then we're telling you to find out the information yourself and read the installation instructions yourself and and make sure you're doing it correctly um i'm going to show you shortly my my job where i went to and it were a disaster um and on that job somebody's come out that knew me 
um, they've seen the videos and then they've seen the disaster if you like uh, but what we'll do just before that we'll go back over to Elliot just for one last one last um, one last video good morning girls and guys the importance of safe isolation you can see the red lights on you can see the few spurs on um, well it does get yellow and it's calling for heat a few spurs off red light stays on so I'll remove the fuse it's a 3 amp fuse which is rare to find normally it's a 13 or a 5 so fuse is out and it's off you just watch me do that and still we're live fuse is out spurs on and still we're live so the fact that the fuse is out as well says to me they've probably wired this incorrectly but there's the incoming goes into the fuse spur out the fuse spur into the receiver unit and then cables coming out the receiver unit going up into the uh, into the boiler so yeah be careful people so it turns out that this is my live feed to the boiler which had no point of local isolation to the boiler um, so there's a few spares somewhere in the house I've been around the whole house and I cannot find it but this is a holiday home they rented out so it could be in one of the locked cupboards over there um, but I don't know where it is so I'm going to put a point of isolation here and I'm going to put a few spare the three amp fuse but whatever this is going off to serve I don't know but I'm not willing to spare off a spare um, I don't know what it's serving it's only in lighting cable but nonetheless I'm not sure what it's serving so I am going to call the agent and let them know that something's not quite right with the electrics anyway and if they want to put this on some other circuit they can do um, but yeah just keep your eyes open out there thank you very much for that Elia and thank you for everything you do for this channel all the videos you send in really really useful if anybody else has got any videos again please send them in landscape if possible and yeah and i'll try and use them if we can to educate people and try and help people as for going back to elliot's job there it, it's really important safe isolation is really important so check out tb118 which is the safety bulletin for gas engineers and you can go onto your gas safe and you can check that um so yeah really important that you do that and check that this channel is not about me telling you what to do um uh, you know anybody who t anybody who does videos what i would say is take what they say with a pinch of salt use it and if it educates you then great but always refer to the installation instructions the current regulations in force at the time different people have different opinions as well so it's always important that you you make your own opinion and you do that by reading the regulations or any safety buttons at the time uh, what i'm going to do now i'm going to show you i'm going to tell you about a story a job that i went to and that were an absolute disaster um, but before that i just want to show you this video here and um, this video this is um this is just a job where the customer they've had a new boiler installed a few years ago they've never bothered to have the boiler service since it were installed and as you can see on this video, the boiler is absolutely destroyed internally. So it's really important that you have your boiler serviced every year. If this boiler would have been serviced, then this leaking sump would have been changed under warranty and they wouldn't have had any issues. The boiler would have been fine. But unfortunately, the customers have to have a new boiler because it's rotted all the case on it. So it's in the right state, to be honest. So yeah, always have your boiler serviced every year. Um, so this next job, I wanted to tell you about what um, one of the somebody who one of the trainees that's worked with me. He, he, he's trained. He's he's good. He's gone out to a job and he struggled a little bit changing um, a heat exchanger on a Worcester Bosch boiler. So I went out just to help him, and we had a we had a big problem. So we 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 changed the heat. They changed the heat cell. Or the the guy changed the heat cell. or what what reveal any names? But he changed the heat cell on the boiler, and as before he'd done that, he he protected all the flap on the boiler. So the so where the circuit board is, he protected it all. So it were all and if there were any water, weren't gonna go anywhere. And just 
just as they were just about to finish, it hadn't put the condensate trap back in and it took all the film off on the on the circuit board so so now there were no protection on it it, it started to fill it up so the so the boiler had some water in for the flow and return part of it for the heat inside of it for the heat exchanger um, but then what happened was he knocked the temperature sensor on the hot water side and the actual temperature sensor popped out and it was full mains pressure and it were really it, one of them jobs where the the house were the highest pressure you can imagine and there's water going everywhere and this ladder he were up the ladder and this water was squirting all over him it were hitting ceiling it were really really bad this was a, it was a disaster water were going all over the circuit board water were going everywhere and so i shouted move out of way move out of way and i run under the boiler i isolated the code on the boiler which meant that it started to slow down because it was coming out of the hot water side. And I says to the lad, I says, oh, open, open cold tap. Um, sorry, open hot tap. So he opened hot tap, but it were a mixer tap. And as they opened the mixer tap, because the pressure was so high, it started going back through the, um, back out again. So we're just making a real, real mess. This, the reason I'm telling you this is because accidents and things happen in this job and sometimes um, you know sometimes things happen and even to best people that do job every day things happen but on this particular job um, so we'd started to get um, we would controlled it now we've stopped all this water and I am soaking wet now by this I had what even water in the air you know um, yeah <laughs> and we've, we've sorted our boiler out there's water everywhere water's in circuit board we've dried out circuit board out and we're just about to fight boiler back up but i just walked outside just to just to freshen off really just to sorry about that i forgot to put phone on to uh, do not disturb um yeah so i walked outside and you couldn't even make this up to be honest so i goes outside and there's a van going past and this guy he, he, oh wow well on that wow i can't believe it I've, i can't believe i've met you oh, i can't believe i've seen you and he's on his, he's getting his phone out for his mate. Wow, I'm, I, Alan Hart, I can't believe it. You know, my name's Alan Hart and all this lot. He's saying on the phone to his mate and stuff like this. And he's telling me, oh, you know, wow, you know, you, you sort of, you're my hero. I did another job and I trained to be a gas engineer because I'd watched your videos and, and he's trained and he's now working for a, for a company, a big company, um, doing boiler repairs and stuff like this. And, you know, it, it He's, he's good, he's trained, he's done really well, and he was really happy. So he says, oh yeah, nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. So then he goes to drive off. So then I goes back in this house, and at this time there's still water everywhere in the house, dust sheets are soaking wet. And this guy, who I'm his hero, if you like, pulls up, gets out of his van, comes to the door, like, oh, you know, what are you doing? He went, oh, he says, um, I've got this job to come to as well. And I'm like, oh no, no way. So he comes in job, and as I say, there's water everywhere. And it's like, <sighs> moral of the story is, never ever go meet your heroes. Um, the boiler, the boiler were okay. We took circuit board out, dried it all out, got it all sorted. We um, Hot floor and stuff were washed and everything were fine it were all okay but it was you know it were um it wasn't the best situation but as i say things happen luckily for me it don't normally happen to me but um over all these years i don't normally have many things i normally try and control it all so you don't have any issues um but that was just one of those things it happened um as i said for mr popped out it caught the the clip on the on, on a Worcester caught the clip for Mr. Popped out and water everywhere. Um, so yeah, just one of those things happened. Um, and I'm babbling on. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. If you've got any clips you want to send me in, as I say, send them in landscape if you can, um, and I'll share them if I can over my social media and different places. Thanks for watching. Thank you to everybody who helps, supports, sends videos in. 
um, helps me in background as well um, lots and lots of people we have got a charity install that we're doing in a few weeks time we've started on them charity installs again one thing to point out with all my charity installs is I fund myself so sometimes when people do charity you know they jump out of a plane or whatever like that they will take money out of the event to to pay for them to do to do it if you like I don't believe in doing that I'm not saying that that's a bad thing but I personally don't do that so we're going up to Scotland um, in a couple of weeks time we're doing a charity install and all the money from that charity install um, will be donated to charity so we, we, we won't be getting any of it we, we, we won't take our expenses out of it so we're traveling up we're going into an hotel we're paying for that hotel herself any bits of copper and things that we use we'll just pay for herself uh, Paul Daly, Daly Plumber and Eating, he's actually paying for the boiler, it's a Wiesman boiler we're installing um, and Paul Daly's funding that. Condensate Pros sent us the um, insulation, the lagging for the condensate pipe and we might need a few other bits like um, we might need a filter and things like that but we'll sort that out. Um, worst comes to worst we'll just have to buy it but I like to try and get all the products for it for free if we can because obviously it's a lot of expense for us a couple of days off work as well um, so I try and get all that stuff and this is just in the need to just to try and just continue with the chari charity stuff that we do continue I think it's brilliant we meet up we have a good laugh and forget about the charity side of it for a minute it's just good to meet all them different people um, so yeah, and, and I'm definitely babbling on now. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching and thank you for everything.